should be thinking about every single one of our school sites as a whole campus, that's a whole system that's alive under our feet. We should be thinking that nature is doing a lot of work for us, and if she's not gonna be there, we're gonna do a whole lot of that work on our own. That costs money, so that you can take to your school boards, that you can take to your politicians. If we don't do it right, we're gonna be costing a lot more at the end. It's really important to be as complex as possible and have as many functions layered on top of each other. That's a basic principle of ecology. Um, it's not maybe a basic principle of politics. It's not maybe a basic principle of how do you get things done for some people. So there's a real change in thinking that we need to accommodate. Um, connected is best, another good ecology primer to think about. And this is the best one. If it's ugly, it probably doesn't work. This is the sh image of a shaman, and the sh image that comes during their starvation time, because before the Inuit were pulled off of their land, they had a cycle of starvation at the end of each winter. So this is an image of the shaman shape-shifting into a wolf. Why are they shape-shifting into a wolf? Because a wolf is a lot better at finding food than two-leggeds. So here you can see the man's face in the wolf, there's a man's leg that's part of the wolf. So as we go through this, I want you to keep thinking about how do we shape shift and shape shift into soil. I love this book, but there's a whole lot of other wonderful resources, but I love the idea of thinking that soil is skin. And not only just skin, but ecstatic skin. Skin that you can love, skin that is just alive and lovely to touch. It's not dirt. We know about worms. That's that's, you know, you have good worm in your garden, you've got good earthworms, you've got healthy soil. Uh, there's a lot of life in there. And unfortunately, what we tend to do is scrape off all that life. That's the first thing we do in any construction project. Oh, that organic stuff. Scrape that all off because you can't build a building on top of that. But that's our sponge. That's our natural sponge. That's where all that life is. That's the right stuff. This is partly why it's the right stuff. This is what happens in living soil all those little networks of systems that are hanging on to the aggregate. Um, this is a fungal hypha, and here's another, that's a great string, right? Connecting that piece of aggregate. That doesn't happen unless you have plants in the soil. It doesn't happen unless those plants are growing and the roots, and this is a good word, the roots have exudates that go out into the soil and are creating sugars and are making a complexity in that soil that brings life and that life hangs things together. What's missing here is the sand, sand particles. There's nothing in there. You can see why it runs out, is loose, is erodible. There's not a lot of life in that. And this is how strong some of those fungal hypha, those mushroom things, those little pieces that are growing in the soil, that's a whole little stone that's in that hand. Pretty tough stuff. So, Another start is how we think about trees. We typically think about tree roots going straight down, and they don't do that, especially for us in the Pacific Northwest, because the trees have evolved in a soil system that's very shallow. So the tree roots grow very shallow and extend way beyond the drip line. And when you impact that with that, with truck wheels that are carrying stuff, any car that drives on wet soil are gonna, is going to compact that soil lose all the life, all that wonderful hypha, all the wonderful aggregate exudates, all of that stuff is gonna die, and a, and a fully loaded truck can kill the soil two feet down, and it's not gonna come back. So let's think a little bit about that campus-wide system. This is just a quick case study on the Issaquah High School. Uh, we finished this a few years ago. And uh, here's the site plan. We started with having to accommodate the existing high school, and that's typically what we're having to do. Uh, we don't have, the school districts don't have a lot of extra land that they can swap out and, and uh, be able to move, move students to and back, so we have to accommodate everything on site. So in this situation, we had to build the building around the existing building. But we started with the idea that this is great soil, we're gonna infiltrate as much as we can. So we did. Those are all rain gardens in the parking lot at Issaquah High School. Rain gardens and then also permeable pavement and the green roof. So you take all that in percentage-wise, there's a ton of work that's being done in this system. 
Some of those are in between the buildings and those become outdoor classrooms that the students can look directly out to. They can have access to it. It's something you walk by. It's a thing of beauty. These are some pictures of the construction. You can see those big deep holes that we're building. If you drive by that site now, you're not going to see those big deep holes. Uh, but that's what's underneath all that yummy soil that we put in and all the plants. That's what it takes. Here's a picture of the inner courtyard, uh, permeable concrete and standard concrete. You can see the shine of the standard concrete and you can see no shine on the permeable. The green patch is a geoblock system. Uh, that's a in reinforced grass pavement. That's where the fire, uh, fire turnaround can be. Uh, that's a picture of that going in. You can see all the little plastic, uh, the plastic tiles, and then the sod went on top of that. Here's the green roof, and uh, another tile system. This was very successful. It's right outside the library. It's uh, the librarian loves it. But how do we get all of that to work? One of the important things, too, is that we give the students in each school the resources to understand what they have on their site. There's nothing worse than out of sight, out of mind, right? So we give these uh, posters to every school that we work on uh, so that they can connect the dots. What are the plants? What are the plants doing? What are they, what's happening in the soil outside? Why is there this weird planter in the parking lot that has a ditch in it? And, it's in the way, I can't walk across it. So I wanted to leave you all with one more little bit. Uh, there's an ancient story, uh, ancient uh, maybe from the native peoples, uh, maybe from some other peoples, but uh, the story goes that when a child is born, they come out of the womb with their fists tight. And the fists are tight because they're hanging on to a gift yet to be revealed. So you all have some gifts that we are looking so forward to seeing. So with that, let it go. Thank you. Woo!